In this series of videos, we've learned how to prepare a cash flow statement. We've learned both the direct and indirect methods of preparing an operating section. And as I've been careful to repeat, we will never do them both. You know, companies won't do both. They'll just choose one or the other. We've done them both because we're, we're learning how to do it, but, but companies will do one or the other. I also mentioned that I much prefer the direct method because it really shows us where our money is coming from and going to, where the indirect method seems like a kind of backwards reconciliation method, and it tells you less, I think, about the company's actual cash flow. Um, we also learned how to prepare the investing section, and that's where uh, you track purchases and sales of long-term assets, mostly equipment, buildings, property, but also investments in other companies would get tracked here. Uh, and cash flows from, of course, investing in other companies and cash flows from uh, long-term assets. The final section is all about long-term liabilities as well as shareholders' equity transactions and dividends. So we learn the operating, investing, and financing sections, how to prepare them, and how a cash flow statement works. Now just a little bit of analysis. The first thing I'll note is when I look at whether it's a direct or indirect cash flow statement I'm generally wanting to see the cash flow from operating activities to be positive because if you think about it the day-to-day -day operations of a business should generate money if your day-to-day -day operations are losing you cash year after year that's a bad sign and that's a company that's probably not gonna last for long so I would love for it to be positive and if I compare to last year's cash flow statement I love to see the cash from operations growing 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 that's a sign of a healthy growing company uh, in terms of investing activities, and this might seem counterintuitive to you, I'm looking for a negative number here. I want to see a company that is buying new equipment. They sell their old equipment, they replace it with new equipment. Investing is supposed to cost a company money. If they're making money consistently in their investing activity, I would think there might be something weird. Are they selling off their assets? Let me give you an example. I work for a university. This university has to buy new computers, new equipment every year. They also sell their old equipment, but they don't, you know, they don't make more on selling their old equipment than they do on buying the new. So that means they're spending more to replace the equipment than they are in money coming in. So I expect this to be a negative number most years. There might be something unusual where the company sells a big piece of land or a big building and it's a one-off, and that can happen from time to time. But I would say most often you're looking to see a negative number here. The final section is the financing section, and here you're just looking to see where the company's long-term funds are coming from. Are they coming from shares? Are they coming from debt? And is this company going to pay me a dividend as a potential investor? Those are the things I'm interested in. Uh, again, the first section I really want to see be a positive number most years and a growing number. The second section, I expect to see a negative number, and it doesn't matter if it's growing or shrinking. In a growing company, it'll be a growing number as well, though. Uh, and in financing, I'm looking to see whether, I, one, I'm going to get a dividend, and two, just what the company's borrowing or, or stock issue situation is. So this was our company. I would say it kind of hit... Uh, on all the things I'd look for, you know, it has a positive cash flow from operations, they are making investments, uh, and they do pay a dividend. Uh, let's look at a real company, and what I thought I might do is I would Google a good old Canadian company, Lululemon Cash Flow Statement. I just put cash flow and there's their Yahoo Finance page. And why am I not getting data? I looked this up just the other day. Let's try this one. There's some data. Okay. So let's look at Lululemons. First of all, I want you to first identify, is this direct or indirect method? And what you should notice is with, if it starts with net income, net income is the start of an indirect method. And you can see Lulu did exactly what we did. Oops. They uh, had net income first, and then they add back their depreciation, and, and they, they do very similar. The professionally prepared one is actually very similar to what we've learned how to prepare. Um, so their net income was 184, and you can see they've added back their depreciation. They've worked backwards, and they've got this year cash flow from operations of 200 million, last year of about 180 million. So you can see their operating cash flow one is positive, and two is growing. This is a sign of a growing, healthy company. Uh, the next line down. Uh, their cash flow from investing, last year they spent $42 million on capital or on investing activities, and this year 122. This is a company that's 
at least last year, made big expansion attempts. That's how I would read that. It's an expanding, growing company, and I expect to see a negative number there. And the fact that it grew by so much means they did real major expansion last year. Uh, the final section, the financing section, you can see that they uh, sold or issued some stock. Uh, and I also know that they didn't pay any dividends. So as an investor, I'd be aware of that. I'd say, okay, well, they're, they're not going to pay any dividends. They're focusing their cash flow on growth. The other thing I note is they, they spent over $100 million in, in you know investing activities and growing their company and, and expanding. And as an investor, you want to know where did that money come from? And you can see they didn't go to the bank. They didn't borrow money. Uh, no net borrowings, in fact. They simply self-funded. They funded through their own operations. They funded their their expansions through their own growth. And and that's a you know a company that's uh, clearly their operations are really generating cash if they're able to fund all their expansion just through their own day-to-day uh, -day operations. So I uh, just wanted to show you a real company and how it compares and the things I might think about as it compares to our sort of pretend company, Turnering. I hope this series of videos has been helpful for you. I hope you're able to prepare a cash flow statement. Again, it's not perfect, right? Like there's there's lots of other monkey wrenches that can get thrown into your cash flow statement, but I hope this helps you step in the right direction.